Good evening. All right. Yay. Praise the Lord. How's the youth doing over there? All right. Praise God. All right. Yay. Are we ready to praise the Lord? Yes. Yes, I am. All right. Well, everyone, please stand. Consume me from the inside out 
This evening, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Ask Him to bless this offering. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you again for another opportunity to come into your house to worship you. Sing these songs of praise to you, Lord. And I pray that tonight we'd be ready for what it is you have for us in the remainder of this service, Lord. You take this offering. You would use it in a mighty way, Lord, for your honor, for your glory. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh 
just touch me And now I am no longer the same He touched me Oh, he touched me He touched me And oh, the joy that was my soul Something happened And now I know He touched me And made me whole Since I met the blessed Dear Savior, since He cleansed and made me whole, I will never cease to praise Him. I'll shout it while He turns. He touched me, oh, he touched me, and oh, the joy that floods my soul, something happened, and now I know.
the Lord. I love that song. Tonight, we're, we're, uh, we've been, we've been hit tonight. We got open house in Awanas. Took, took the hit for the team. I didn't know that. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Me too. Praise God. I, uh, I'm excited tonight. We're, we're going to have a, a just a regular uh, preaching. We'll have invitation afterwards. Uh, doing something just a little bit different Sunday night tonight, and uh, we're we're blessed to have Brother Jeffrey come and preach to us. You guys welcome Brother Jeffrey. Amen. Love you. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. I don't know how many of you are blown away when you sing those words to him and think, me, me. And we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight, how just a little old me can do something great for God, not just me, I mean all of us that have claimed those words, so victory in Jesus. If you have your Bibles tonight, you can open up to Acts chapter 9, and then hold your place there in Acts chapter 9, and go over to Exodus chapter 3. So Exodus, Exodus. Just made one up, brand new, right there on the spot. Exodus. That was an accidental exodus. Acts chapter 9 and Exodus chapter 3. That's where we'll be. And uh, a few things, before we get into this, a few things have led up to this message over the past couple of weeks. And one of them in particular is uh, this past week, the missions conference. Uh, what a blessing it was. And uh, I'll tell you, it was just uh, so encouraging to me. So, uh, um, I don't know, just my, my head is just swimming with all the things that took place this past week. And uh, so some of it might come out very clear tonight, and other of it might come out kind of jumbled because it's all, it's, it's all just a, a big mush pot up there of, of things that we've, we've covered. And uh, I got home uh, late yesterday evening after helping my dad do some things. And I, I told Ashley, it was like 8 o'clock, I said, Late. See, late at 8 o'clock. I was like, I'm tired. Why am I so tired? She's like, well, think about everything that we've done this week. Think about everything that we've experienced. Think about all the, the emotions and things that have taken place this week. And I was like, you know what? You're right. Yeah, but it's been a great week. It's been a good week. So some of that has, has inspired. And some of the very verses that some of these men stood from this pulpit and preached 
I, I couldn't get away from them. Like, Lord, I just, just laid them on my heart. I need to study them. I need to look at them. I need to go over them. And I, I love that when, when people get up and, you, and they, they preach the Word of God and it just doesn't leave you and you just got to go back home. You got to study it. You got to get in, in, your, in, your, in your own little spot and just get, get time with the Word of God. But then there were a couple of other things that, that uh, kind of inspired the title for this message. And I don't know how many of you go online and, and you read uh, or look at the uh, past sermons. But underneath the, the past sermons, not only Brother Kyle has some nice, concise titles that are like, Returning to God, Part 2. Returning to God, Part 3. And, and then you go to mine and it's like a mile long. It takes up like half the screen. And I hope that they can fit. Whoever uploads those videos, I hope they can fit this title on there. Uh, because it was inspired by some things that took place. And uh, there were some awkward moments that, that kind of inspired some of this. And uh, one of them took place up here in the choir. And uh, I'm praising the Lord that we have new members, that we have new members that are now ready to just serve as much as they possibly can. But because of these new members, some of you who are in here tonight, you've led to some awkward moments. And I mean this in the most loving way. Because Brother Jim was like, hey, we got some new people and it's like two people. I'm like, two people, we can go by. We can all meet them. We don't have to do this awkward thing where we say our name and something nice about ourselves. But he made us do it. He made us go through the line. And we all had to, to just sit there and tell our name. Even in school, that was awkward. Like the first day of school, like, tell you, stand up, say your name, tell, you, tell something important about yourself or whatever. So he makes us do it. And, uh, uh, then, then, like a week later, we have the first iron sharpened iron, and uh, I gotta keep in mind this is all men in this room. And Brother Kyle makes us do the same exact thing. I'm like, there's only two new people here. We don't have to do all this. This is, this is awkward. And when Brother Ricky stands up, you never know what's gonna come out of his mouth. And, and it's just, it's true. He said something crazy that night. You just never know what's going to happen when you open up a room like that. It's awkward. But they get to me, and uh, I want to tell you what I said. I said, my name is Brother Jeffrey. And I, I felt like everyone knew me, and I didn't really have many hobbies or activities, but I just said, my name is Jeffrey Holt, and I'm a servant of Jesus Christ. And I go where he tells, where he sends me, and I do what he tells me. And so uh, I'm not saying that to brag or to boast or anything like that, but, but I go, that, that's the title of our message tonight. But I added to it a little bit, just to make it a little bit longer. And to go, we need to go where he sends us. And we need to do what he tells us when we get there. We need to go where he sends us, and then we need to do what he tells us once we get to wherever it is he sent us to go. That's not all the title. You can shorten that, make it smaller. You know what to do. Concise. Well, these things inspire me. God, God working on my heart, dealing with my heart, saying, this is what you need to teach. This is what you need to preach. And uh, go and talk to some of your husbands. Find out what they said in Iron Sharp and Iron. Some of it was just absolutely crazy. So well, without any uh, further ado, let's pray and uh, let's get right into this. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you so much for this evening. Thank you for an opportunity uh, to stand up and to preach your word. And uh, it's like I hollered to Brother Kyle. Yes, if it was just one, I would love to preach. I would love to teach, Lord. Uh, there's times that you work when it's just me. Lord, even through this sermon, through these things that you've dealt with my heart already, on these things that you've laid on my heart, Lord. And I pray that tonight uh, you would convict, that you would, you would bless, that you would work in a mighty way here in, in, in this congregation, with this people, with this group that's here right now. Lord, no doubt in my mind, you've had a plan and a purpose. You've been, you've been, you've been uh, uh, inspiring all this. You've been bringing all this together for the past uh, a few weeks now for a reason for a purpose, and for a plan. And I pray that tonight that your, your will would be accomplished, that your way would be had through my words, through my actions, everything that's said and done, Lord, through your precious and holy word. Lord, let, it, let it all be about you tonight. We love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus chapter 3, starting in verse 1. It says, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to Oreb. 
And and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, and the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will, not, I will now turn aside and see, I, I will now turn aside to, and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And this just isn't some sort of little children's story that we teach to little kids in Sunday school. This is the very word of God. This is the very truth. I, I sit here and read this as the inspired word of God, that God breathed this unto a man to write it for us so that we can read it and know that this truly happened. I don't want us to get lost and sometimes that these are our children's stories or that this, is, this isn't enough for us. No, this is the word of God and he's left, us, he left it here for us. So yes, Moses went and he saw this burning bush and he turned aside and he looked at it and he saw this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. Verse 4, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see it, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, draw not nigh hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. And, 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 and the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by the reason of their taskmaster, taskmasters, and for I know their sorrows. And I came down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of, the land, out of that land unto a good land and a large, unto a land flowing with milk and honey, unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the, and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore... I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the land, uh, the, the children out of out of the out of of Israel, out of Egypt. Excuse me. So I will go where he sends me, and once I get there, I'm going to do what he tells me to do. With that in mind tonight, I want you to to keep that in mind as we go through just three three, three things tonight. Number one is that we need to turn to the Lord. That we need to turn to the Lord. And yes, first and foremost, obviously, we need to turn to, to the Lord in salvation. When someone comes and preaches that gospel unto us and, and gives us that, that, that message of salvation, I, I look around this room and I see most of you, and I know most of your stories and know what's going on, but if you're here tonight and you still haven't turned to Jesus Christ in salvation, tonight is the night. We need to turn to the Lord. But then when God calls us and tells us to go and do something, we need to turn. When He's there speaking to us, we need to turn to Him. And and listen to what it is he has to say. Again, from our text in Exodus, ex, Exodus, I said it again. Exodus chapter 3, verse 2. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked on it, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, ah, and he ran away. No, absolutely not. He said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Listen, I love fire. I love messing with fire. I love playing with fire. I, I, lo I love it. Um, um, uh, you can do some really cool things with fire. One thing I suggest not doing is pouring it into a hole and then placing your face over that hole and then lighting it on fire. It's not good. It shoots out like a cannon. Burns off all your eyeball, eyebrows, eyelashes, all that stuff. It's not, not a good... Yeah, don't do that. Anyways, uh, but, but even at this, if I saw a bush that was burning with flame of fire and, and it wasn't, wasn't being consumed, I, I don't know what I, what I would have thought. I don't know what I would have done. The fact that it was not consumed. But then, but, the, but then in verse 3, and Moses said, I will, uh, sorry, I will not turn aside and I'll see this great side while the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see it, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see it, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And Moses said, ah, again, no doubt. I mean, what, what was he thinking? He said, he said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. He didn't say, ah. It's a horrible scream. He said, here am I. 
Not only was there this, bur this burning bush sitting there burning, not being consumed, but then it speaks. And Moses says, here am I. He turned to the Lord. There are times in our lives when God is very clearly calling us to do something and sometimes calling us in, in crazy situations and things that we would never expect God calling us to do or God calling us to use us for a purpose in our lives and we have to turn and say, Lord, here am I. Moses there and, and God seeing him turn to him and turning aside to see, I wonder what would have happened if Moses hadn't have turned aside. Sometimes my brain just goes crazy when I start reading the scriptures and, again, the jumbled mess comes into my mind. But I had just a few mental images of Moses, like seeing the burning bush and just quickly scurrying away. And, and then uh, I think about Jonah. And when God called him to go and, 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 and preach to the Ninevites, he said, no, I'm going 2,500 miles the other way. I'm going to Tarshish. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going uh, away from this place. We know what happened there. I mean, God sent this giant fish and swallowed him up. What would have happened if, if Moses had a turn uh, the other way and not turned aside to look at this burning bush, not listen to God? I, I, I picture like this, 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 this amazing wind come through and just, just lick up the fire and, and get Moses' robe when he's walking away and just consuming Moses' stop, drop, and rolling and like running back to the bush. I, I don't know. That's one scenario. There were a few others, but I'll just stop there. I don't know what would happen, but he didn't. He turned aside and he said, yes, Lord, here am I. Here am I. I want to read another set of scriptures in Acts chapter 9. I told you, asked you to keep your place there. In Acts chapter 9, we see another man who decided to turn to the Lord. Who decided to turn to the Lord. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 1, and Saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughters against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, uh, to the synagogues, that if, if he found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell uh, to the earth and heard a voice uh, saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, he didn't say, ah, he didn't run away. He didn't do any of those things. And he said, who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Listen to verse 6. And, and he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. See, he turned to the Lord, and he said, You know what, nah, 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 Lord, I'm, I'm here. Whatever it is you have me to do. Uh, I believe wholeheartedly at this moment that he got saved, and he surrendered his life and said, Lord, I'm all in. Whatever it is that you want me to do. This, this, this very well-educated man decided at this point that he was going to give his life to Jesus Christ and turn to him and do whatever it is he called him to do. I don't know what the deal is with our youth of this day. As they're sitting back there in the back, back row, doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. Just kidding. Uh, but uh, I, I, it's becoming more and more common. I, I witness to a lot of young people. When I witness to these young people, they feel like they have this, this need to tell me how bad they are. And how, they could, how they, they could never turn to the Lord. How they could never accept Jesus Christ. And you'd be surprised at how much they open up when you, when you start sharing the gospel with them. And how much they'll, they'll share with you. They say, well, you, you don't know me. You don't know all the bad things that I've done. You don't know how many, how many people I've slept with and I'm only this age. You don't know how many, how many uh, 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 times I've, uh, I've dabbled in... in 
Is that me, man? What's going on? I've dabbled in 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 uh, on homosexuality, and I'm bisexual, and I'm I was born a girl, but I, I'm I'm trying to transform myself into a guy or something like this. And they just go on and on about all these sick and disgusting things that they're doing, like it's like it's going to impress me or something like that. Like I'm I'm going to be like, you know what? You're way too bad. God could never accept you. You're right. You're absolutely right. I should just stop talking right now. And uh, you, you've, you've won me over. I believe you. Well, many kids go on about how, how, how bad they are and how they disobey their teachers and how they disobey their parents and how uh, everything that their parents tell them to do, that they do the exact opposite and, and they, they just choose to be bad. This is the way they, they are and that God can never accept them. And I stop them right there at the moment and I say, you need to turn to the Lord. And they say, no, you, you don't understand. I just told you all these bad things I've done. And I asked them, I said, did you wake up this morning seeking out Christians to kill? Did you wake up this morning with, 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 with the, ver- the only thought that was on your mind is that you would go out and you would find more Christians to imprison? Did you wake up, uh, did you go to bed yesterday breathing out these thoughts of, 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 of taking Christians and murdering them for their faith? And every single one of them has to say, well, no, I've never, I don't do that. I say, then you're not too bad, because I know a man. I know a man named, named Saul who was on this road, and all of a sudden, someone came to him and shined this light on him, and he turned to the Lord. So we need to go out and we need to share with people that they need to turn to the Lord. They need to turn to the Lord for, to salvation. But then we also need to turn to the Lord, those of us that are saved, when he calls us to go and do these things. Pass through Sunday mornings, uh, Brother Kyle has been uh, and, uh, busting out some Old Testament minor prophets. And I was like, you know what? If he can get in on this, I can do this too. I can, I can, I can, I can pull out some minor prophets here and, and, and tie it all in together. So this is Zechariah chapter 1, verse 1 through 6. In the eighth month, in the second year, the reign of Darius, came the word of the Lord unto Zechariah, the son of Barakiah, Bar- and the son of Iddo, the prophet, saying, the Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. And so again, this prophet saying, I'm coming and not telling you anything new, but telling you things that you've heard before. That, 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 uh, these, these people are displeased, that the Lord is displeased with you, with your fathers. Therefore say unto them, thus saith the Lord of hosts, turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways and from your, e- from your evil doings. But they, did neither, uh, but, but they did not hear nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Are your, fathers, are your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I have commanded my servant, the prophets, did they not take hold of your father. So this prophet Zechariah saying, turn unto the Lord. Turn unto him. When he comes and he's, he's, he's declaring these things unto you, declaring these truths, come unto him. We need to turn unto him. We need to decide to go where he sends us, to go where he sends us. And then once we get there, listen and do what he says. Let's skip over to Exodus chapter 4. Exodus chapter 4 and Moses there had, uh, and just uh, got this, these commands from the Lord to go to Egypt. We, we read it at the end of uh, uh, verse, uh, verse 10 there, to come unto him, to come unto Egypt and go to these places and do these things. In Exodus chapter 4 and verse 1, And Moses answered and said, But, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice, for they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what, what it is that in thine hand? And he said, A rod. And he said, Cast it upon the ground. And he cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. And Moses said, Ah, really this time. He said, Ah, and he ran. He fled from it. He threw the rod on the ground and he, and he, and he ran. He, 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 he ran from it, and, 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 and he says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand. Obviously, he came back because the Lord's like, Put forth thine hand. 
or the snake chased them down. I'm not exactly sure which happened. But either way, the Lord told him, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail and put, it, put forth his hand. And he caught it and it became a rod in his hand. He says that they may believe that the Lord God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, hath appeared unto thee. I had a Moses experience one time with a snake, and I just have to share it right now. I think it's perfectly applicable, and I'm sure God will bless it in a mighty way. But I was weed eating one time. I didn't have a rod. I had a weed eater. And I was weed eating, and I hit something with my weed eater. This was back when I lived in Blue Mound. Anybody from Blue Mountain? No one's from Blue Mountain? Oh, Miss Kathy. There you go. Blue Mountain. Represent. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 I was there in Blue Mountain. What is going on? I was there in Blue Mountain and weed eating. I hit something. And uh, I, 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 I put my rod down, my weed eater down, and it was a snake. I was like, man, this, my weed eater did not turn into a snake. I hit a snake. The snake. And, and I don't know what I was thinking. I just reached down and grabbed the snake. I had no idea if I was grabbing the head or the tail or anything. I, I, was just, I don't even like snakes. I'm, I'm like Moses. I would have fled from the rod if it turned into a snake. But for some reason that day, it was my bright idea to reach down and grab that snake. And, I, and, I, and the snake's just bleeding all over me. And I'm like yanking on the snake, pulling it. And thankfully it was its tail. And uh, uh, yeah, the snake got away. It went underneath the fence. But that was my Moses story. That's, that's, that's it. That's all I got. But the, the weed eater was there. Didn't turn into a snake. Never mind. All right. Verse 6. This popping is really wearing me out. It's distracting me. And the Lord said furthermore unto him, Put now thine hand into thy bosom. And he put the hand into thy bosom, and he took it out, and behold, it was leprous. No, I don't have a story for this. And he said, Put thine hand into thy bosom again. And he put his hand into the bosom again, and he plucked it out of his bosom. And behold, it turned again as his other flesh. And it came to pass, uh, it, it, it came to pass uh, if they... I right, just... All kinds of technology is going wrong right here. All right. iPad just went nuts. I told you the Lord was going to bless that story in a mighty way. And it came to pass, if they believe not, they neither hearken the voice of the first sign, that they will believe the voice of the latter sign. And it shall come to pass, uh, if they believe not these other signs, neither hearken unto thy voice, that thou shalt take the water of the river and pour it upon the dry land. And the water which thou takest out of the river shall, be, shall become blood upon the dry land. And, Mo and Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent. Neither here, there, heretofore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. God, he said there at the beginning, but Lord, but Lord, they, they won't believe me. And then here at the, end, at the, at the next point, he says, he says, and Lord, my Lord, I'm not eloquent of speech. I don't have the skills to go out and do these things. Verse 11, and the Lord said unto him, who hath made man's mouth? Or who maketh? The dumb or the deaf, and seeing or, or the seeing or the blind, have not I the Lord? Verse 12, now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth, and I will teach thee what thou shalt say. And he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him who thou wilt send. Verse 14, and the anger of the Lord was kindled upon Moses. And he said, is not Aaron the Levite thy brother? I know that he can speak well. And also behold, he cometh forth to meet thee. And when he seeth thee, he will be glad in his heart. And thou shalt speak unto him and put words in his mouth. And I will be with thy mouth and with his mouth. With his mouth and I will teach thee, teach you what you shall do. And he shall be a spokesman unto the people, and he shall be even as he shall be to, the, to thee instead of a mouth, and thou shalt be to him instead of a God. And thou shalt take this rod in thine hand, wherewith thou shalt do signs. So we see Moses, number one, that he turned to God, even though this was a crazy circumstance, a crazy situation, a burning bush speaking to him. He knew that he needed to turn and he needed to be there. And then we see him turn to excuses. He turned to God, but then he turned to excuses. The point number two is that we need to turn away from the excuses. Moses had every excuse. They won't believe me. 
Lord, I'm not eloquent of speech. Again, Moses answered said, But behold, they will not believe me. In verse 10, again it says, And Moses said unto the Lord, My Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here to forth, nor since hast thou spoken unto thy servant. I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. So if we sit and we, don't, and we don't turn from these excuses, nothing will ever get done. Moses, nothing would have ever happened there in Egypt. These people would have been left there. We don't know whether God would have raised someone else up or not. But he, he, he made these excuses. And so he had to get past those things. I think about my life and think, what if I had kept making? What if I had made excuses? I said, Lord, not me. I can't go do these things. It's kind of creepy last week. One of the missionaries, his name was Jeremy. My name was Jeffrey. His daughter's name was Juliana. My daughter's name is Julianne. His son's name is Jacob. And my son's name is Jake. We were both body shop painters before we surrendered to the ministry. We surrendered to the ministry right around the same year. We started Bible Institute right around the same time. We were both called into full-time ministry, I think, the same exact year. It was very odd. And then he's sitting up here talking, how can a... How can, the, how can a, 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 a God use just a painter? Just a car painter. And I was like, that's right. How can God do that? And then he, he said one more thing. I didn't even get to talk to him about this one. But he goes, he goes, the only reason, the only way I made it through high school is that I took three hours of body shop every day. And I was like, oh, which is getting even creepier. Because when I was in, I had it for the first two periods of the day. And then somehow I convinced my counselor to let me be a teacher aide in body shop for the third period. So I had it for the first three periods every day. And I was like, that's exactly right. How can God someone use like me? Like, how can God use someone like me? Many of you know my story. I went, was married maybe six months. I went to my wife and I said, it was a Saturday night. And I was like, God's calling me to go to the church. She said, what do you mean God's calling you to the church? I'm like, I need to be there full time. I need to go. See, God had been dealing with me and doing amazing things. I, I was... I, 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 was just drawn to, to some things that were going on here and couldn't be here because of my job, because of these things. And I said, I, I'm going. Sunday morning, I came down and I made it public. I said, you know what? I'm surrendering the ministry full time to today. This is the day. I'm, I'm in full time. That Monday, the very next day, I go in and put it in my two weeks. I'm coming. I'm coming to work. I'm coming to be here. What if I had a made excuses? What if I had a made excuses and said, Lord, I... I don't know English. I hardly can speak English. I say stuff like accident. <sighs> now I think I can, I used to keep track of the people I led to the Lord, but I got to be honest with you and not to brag, but I lost track a long time ago. I lost track of the number of kids and people that I've been able to lead to the Lord through God and his glorious gospel. I think, what if I had made those excuses? I'm saying, God, I, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go where you send me. And I'm not going to do what you tell me to do once I got there. But I said, God, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. There's no excuses. There's no reason to make any excuses. Moses made some excuses, but he had to get past those things. And we see that God uh, created some, some ways for him out of these things, but God used him in a mighty way. God can use us in a mighty way if we turn to him, and if we won't make these excuses back in, cha in Acts chapter 9, starting in verse 7, and the men which journeyed with Paul, remember he had just had this, 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 the, this, this uh, experience there, he saw the light, he said, yes Lord, uh, wherever you want me to go, send me, I'm going, I'm going to do whatever it is you have for me. In verse 7, and the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from, from the earth when his eyes were opened, and he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And when he was th there three days without sight, neither did he eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him the Lord uh, said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street, which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth. And he has seen a vision, a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. And then Ananias, he makes the excuse. He says, But Lord, 
Well, Lord, there's times in our lives, I know that I've been caught up in this in my life, and I'm going to share a story. I've been caught up in this in my life. I'm going to share a story in a minute. But uh, there was times in my life that I was intimidated by people. I didn't want to go and talk to that person. I didn't want to go and witness to that person. I didn't want to go and share to that person. And simply by things I'd heard, things I'd seen, or, or just their appearance, it was a horrible place to be. I was making excuses of why I couldn't share the glorious light of the gospel. Even though God had sent me there. God had sent me here. And had given me instruction to tell. And I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing what he told me to do. And, and the Lord said, I'm going to rise and go in the street and find him. I've given him a vision. Ananias, you, you're going to come unto him. Verse 13. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard of this man. I've heard, I heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to the saints at Jerusalem. And, and here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. You see, Ananias didn't know what had happened to Paul. Ananias didn't know that he had, he had turned to the Lord into, into salvation. He didn't know that, the, that Paul had now surrendered his life to go and do whatever it was that the Lord called him to do. And Ananias was making an excuse. Why he couldn't go where the Lord had told him to go and do what the Lord had told him to do. Verse 15. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my, for my name's sake. On him, on him said, uh, in Ananias, excuse me, verse 17, And Ananias went his way. After he made the excuse, he eventually listened to the Lord. And Ananias went his way and entered in the house. And putting his hands on him, listen to this. And he said, Brother Saul. Brother Saul, there were no more excuses. He said, all right, Lord, I made my excuse. And now I'm listening to you. I'm going where you sent me. And I'm going to do what you tell me to do once I get there. He says, Brother Saul. The Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes it had been, as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, forthwith and arose. There's times that people are intimidating and we don't want to go and talk to those people. I'll tell you, there's times that, that, I, that, I, that I, I had the, this, these moments in my life. Where I knew God was calling to me to talk to people, and I made excuses. And then one night, we were walking uh, away from the American Airlines Center. We had to receive some free tickets to a Dallas Stars game. And I ran into the scariest guy I've ever ran into in my life. I was truly fearful about what was going to happen. I didn't know. I had no idea. And yet, uh, God uh, used me in that situation. Before I left there, I had this, this homeless guy named... I don't even remember his name. He gave me a fake name. It was some crazy name. It was pretty cool, but it was crazy. And, uh, but by the end, this man was a uh, heroin addict, was trying to get off, was a drunk, was, had all kinds of problems, dirty, one of the stinkiest people I've ever met in my life. And by the end of that conversation, he's there hugging me, crying, weeping on my shoulder, shoulder and I'm like, all right, Lord. These are the people I need to go through every time. This is what I want. This is what I need to be doing, Lord. That broke me that night. That night was the end of, of looking at people and looking at things and making excuses about, about these things. No more excuses, Lord. I'm going to turn to you. I'm going to go where you send me. I'm going to do what you tell me to do once I get there. Thursday night, we had our apartment outreach and, and uh, I was sitting there talking to Andrew or Drew and and uh, no, we weren't talking. We were throwing the football back and forth. Just throwing the football back and forth. And I see this guy walking up. And he was one of those dudes that could have just crushed me with his little pinky. And I was like, that's my guy. That's the guy I need to go talk to. Like, no doubt in my mind, that's the one. I mean, he had the, the, the sleeveless shirt, muscles just bulging, tattoos everywhere, dreads flowing. I was like, that's the guy I need to talk to. He's the one that I need to go to. So Andrew's throwing the ball. And I just leave. I just walk off. I'm like, this is it, Lord. This is, this is who I came here for tonight. This is the man. And I go and start talking to this guy, and he looks mad because the vending machine's not working. And I'm like, hey, we got drinks right here. They're free. You don't even have to pay for them. Just, just come on over here. And we get to talk on the way to the ice chest. He's new to the area. He's from St. Louis, Missouri. He goes to something, something Baptist Church in St. Louis and here looking for a church home. Like, you are the guy that I was sent to talk to tonight. 
You are the man. And there's no, no reason to fear. There's no reason to do these things. We should go and tell these people where God's told us to tell and, 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 and minister to them. One more. I'm going to go to Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17. Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Brother Jeffrey, listen, I, I've, I've turned to the Lord. Yes, I've turned to him in salvation. I've, I've placed my faith in the fact that he came and he was, he was born of a virgin and he lived that perfect sinless life. And not only did he live that perfect sinless life, but, but he, he, he died on that cross. And on that cross, he shed his blood. And Jeffrey, I know that he shed his blood for my sins, that his sins was the payment or the propitiation for my, sh my sins. I know these things. And then I know that, 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 that he died on that cross and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. And then three days later, he rose again. Jeffrey, I turn to the Lord. I know those things. And not only that, Brother Jeffrey, but I, I've, I've turned to the Lord and, and I'm gone, I've gone where he told me to go. I'm supposed to be here. This is where I'm supposed to be. And not only have I gone and, and turned to the Lord in salvation, I've, I've turned to him and, and followed him where he told me to go. But I, I quit making excuses a long time ago. Then I just want to say, praise God. Thank you so much for deciding to do that. Thank you so much for choosing to be here. But there's times that we get even here. And we go where God tells us to go. And we do these things. And sometimes we get caught up in the busyness of life. We get caught up in the busyness of just going to church and getting there on time. And being a, being a part of the service. And, and, and sometimes we forget that there's a lot of work that needs to happen. There's a lot of things that need to go on to, 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 to make this body exist. And so Exodus chapter 17 and verse 8. It says, then came uh, Amalek. And I just wanted to stick with Moses. Uh, we've been talking about him, and I like this story. So, and, and I like, I, 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 what was I saying? Oh, yeah, I like this story. We, 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 Moses, he, he, he'd gone to Egypt now. He, he led the people across the Red Sea. As a matter of fact, he just got through dealing with them because they were complaining because they needed water or something. I don't know. Anyways, and, and, he, and he hit the rock. It came flowing out. They got water, and now this happens. Exodus chapter 17, verse 8. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in mine hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when Moses let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands uh, were heavy. And they took a stone and they put it under him. And he sat thereon and Aaron and Hur stayed up his hands. The one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a, for a, a memorial in a book, and, the, and, and rehearse it into the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out, uh, uh, out the remembrance of, the, of Amalek from under heaven. So we need to turn to the Lord. We need to turn away from excuses. But number three, we need to turn. To help, We need to turn to help. When we see that there's, that, 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 that there's people in need or that there's things that we can be doing, we need to turn to help. You see, uh, Aaron and her, they could have been sitting there on that hill. I'm like, oh, look at Moses. He's kind of struggling there a little bit. I'm sure that rod's getting pretty heavy. And a matter of fact, I noticed that every time the, the rod lowers down a little bit, that it seems that we're losing men in the battle and, and, and things aren't going our way. Uh, man, that stinks. That's, that's not good at all. And they could have just sat there because no doubt it says that they, that they took this stone and they placed it under Moses. I don't know why Moses couldn't go to the stone, but for some reason they had to take this stone and place it under Moses. And they could have been like, that stone's really heavy. I don't feel like getting up right now. Moses, you got this. Just whatever happens, happens. And, and you, we're good. You know, just, just, 
I don't want to get up and move a stone. But they did. They got up and they moved the stone. They got up and they went and they did that work. They saw that there was a help. They saw that there was, there was a need and they said, all right, I'm going. I'm going to do these things. So maybe you're here and you say, well, God sent me here. And I'm here to do what he tells me to do. Well, it's time to turn and to help the work of God. You see, you probably say, well, Brother Jeffrey, we can't all be preachers. We can't all uh, be Sunday school teachers. We can't, we can't all do these things. And you're absolutely right. The Bible says that there's differing gifts given to us and I'm 100% on board of that but we can all get up and we can all help this body right here we can't all be eyeballs we can't all be feet we all we can't all be hands but we can all stand up and hold each other up and do these things again but Moses in verse verse 12 chapter 17 verse 12 but Moses hands were heavy and they took a stone and they put it under him and he sat there on and Aaron and her stayed up his hands that one on the one side and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Back to Acts chapter 9. We just got two stories playing together tonight. Acts chapter 9, verse 19. Remember, Paul had just uh, uh, received his sight when we finished talking about this just a few moments ago. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then, saw, then was Saul certain days with his disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that, the, that is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on his name in Jerusalem and came hither for that intent that he might be bound under the chief priest? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt in Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. And after that many days were fulfilled, the Jews took counsel to kill him. But there laying away, to, there, but there laying away was known of Saul, and they watched the gates day and night that they might kill him or to kill him. Listen to this. Then the disciples... Then the disciples, they saw that there was a need. They saw that they needed to help this man. And they said, we're going to do it. God's called us here. God's got us here. And now we're going to do what he tells us to do. The disciples took him by night and led him down by the wall, by the wall in a basket. Could you imagine if they didn't let down Saul that night? Could you imagine if they said, you know what, this guy was here just trying to kill us. He was coming here to kill us. And I don't think his conversion was very, very, very true. I don't think he's really, what he says didn't really happen. No, they let him down on the wall in the basket. And it happens two more times before the end of this chapter. chapter and, and Saul was come to Jerusalem and, and he was swayed to join himself to the disciples. But they were all afraid of him. And believed not that he was well, believed not that he was a disciple, but Barnabas took him. Listen, sometimes it's just one person. Sometimes it's just one person helping helping one other person to make a lifetime of difference, to make a, a lasting impact, to, to change uh, uh, an amazing uh, uh, work. I mean, Barnabas, he stood up for Paul and he says, I'm going to help you with this moment. He could have chose not to. He could have chose to been like, be like the other disciples there in Jerusalem and said, yeah, we heard that you might have done a few things in Damascus, but how do we know you're not tricking us? How do we know you're not coming back here and you're going to get in amongst us and then, and then kill us all? But, 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 but Barnabas stood up. Listen, it might be you and your, your, your choice to help someone today. It might be you and your choice to encourage someone today and say, you know what, Brother Turner, great song tonight. You know what, you know what, uh, Brother Kyle, great message this morning. Maybe that's just what they need today, just that help. Maybe it's just one person. And there's a young lady walking into the church this morning and she was carrying a big old basket, a big old basket of things. Me being a great man, I didn't think to offer to help her carry it, but I stopped her and started talking to her. And uh, I know she wasn't expecting this, and, and uh, God just laid it on my heart. I said, I said, you know what? You're looking great lately. I, uh, you, just, you just look different. I said, hey, there's something about you. I said, I, I see you serving in ministries that I haven't seen you serving in a long time. I see you doing things that I've never seen you do here before. And I said, it's just a blessing to me. She stops. She starts uh, welling up a little bit. And she said, thank you 
so much. Listen, I don't know how far that's going to go. That might have been just it. But who knows, that might have been that one help, that one encouragement, that one thing that she needed to just, to just launch her into to something amazing that God's got planned for her. I don't know. But the point is that we all need to say, yes, yeah, I'm going to take this time to help. I'm, God's got me here. He, he's got me here for a reason. I'm going to turn to Him. I'm no more excuses. And I'm going to do what He tells me to do. I'm going to help. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how, the, how he had seen the Lord in the way and how he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Which when the brethren knew it, all of a sudden they're their brethren because one man decided to stand up and help him. One man started to stand, decided to stand up and hold up his arms, if you will. One man decided to do this thing. And it says, but when the brethren knew, they brought him down to Caesarea and sent him forth to Tarsus. Listen to verse 31. Because this one man stood up and said, you know what? I'm here. God sent me here. I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I'm going to help. Verse 31, then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria and were edified and, the, and, and, and walking in fear of the Lord and in comfort of the Holy Spirit were multiplied. Listen, we don't know how that one little bit of help, it, it, that one little thing we're going, we, we do can, 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 can transform things in a mighty way. As the musicians come, I'm going to read... One more set of scripture, and I said at the beginning, this is kind of uh, taken from some of the things I heard this week and studying them. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Verse 14. And how, sh how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. We heard several different men read these scriptures this week. And I believe it was for a purpose. I believe it was for a reason. And I believe that there's many of you that, that, in this room tonight that can say, you know what? God's sent me here. I'm going, I went where God sent me, and now God sent you here, and He's telling you to do specific things, and many of you are, are doing specific things in this church because God's told you to do it. And then, and then along the way, God's told you to help in certain areas. And I truly believe that this is the command of God. That this is one of the most crucial to help in this area of getting the gospel message forth. So if you're here tonight, you say, you know what, I know I'm here. I know I've gone where God's got me. But somewhere along the way, I've, I've still been making some excuses. I haven't been doing exactly what God's called me to do. I haven't been willing to help. I haven't been willing to commit to soul winning. I haven't, I haven't filled out that faith promise card. Tonight's the night. I'm going to go where he sends me. I'm going to do what he tells me. And it could be something way more simple than that. What the north wind blew in a bunch of trash today. I could stop and I could pick it up on my way. Or maybe I walk out to the car in the bar ditch. I find a piece of trash out there. I can stop and pick it up, put it in my car. I can walk 10 feet, well, 20 feet on the way back. Unless it's a beer can, don't put it in your car. There's a lot of beer cans. I think people like to throw them out there. Walk an extra 100 feet and put it in the dumpster. You see, you say, can something that bit, that small make a difference? Yeah, because what if one of us don't have to stop and pick it up? What if, what, if, what, if, what if something happens like that and all of a sudden we have an opportunity to preach the gospel because we're not consumed by a piece of trash because we've all decided to do our part in help? That's kind of extreme. Yeah, but we don't know. We don't know what God has if we just decide to help in these little areas. I'm going to go where he sends me. Once I get there, I'm going to do what he tells me to do. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, Lord. I pray. If there's anyone here tonight and maybe sat through this whole week and said, no, now's not the time. 
I mentioned in the missions conference about King Agrippa, but there was another man named Felix just a, a few verses earlier that said, uh, not right now. Now's not the time. I pray that tonight if there's anybody here that's just kind of been holding on and waiting uh, for whatever reason, Lord, that tonight they say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm going. I'm going where you tell me. I'm turning to the Lord. I'm not fleeing from this burning bush. I'm not fleeing from the light. I'm not doing these things. I'm going to turn and go. Maybe there's someone here that doesn't know Jesus Christ. I pray that tonight would be the night they turn to the Lord in salvation. Maybe there's someone here who has turned to you, but they've been making excuses. Maybe it's something like now is not the time, Lord. It is like King Agrippa. Almost those missionaries, they had me. Almost they persuaded me. Lord, maybe we just need to decide to help a little bit more. To help in this body. But we don't know the impact that it could have. We don't know the lives that it can change. What if we're the one that goes to that next outreach? What if we're the one that knocks that door? And the whole family gets saved. And that family shares with the family next door. And that family is called to preach. And that family starts the great revival that was even just mentioned here this morning. Lord, we don't know. I pray that we would be doing our part. That we'd be going where you send us. Doing what you tell us to do once we get there. Bless now during this invitation. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Turning back, no turning back. No longer go with me, I still will follow. No longer go with me, I still will follow. No longer go with me, I still will follow. No turning. Thank you guys for being here tonight. I have to share one praise. Uh, There's a few people that decided to help this week. Actually, a whole school. And uh, little kids. Uh, every year during the missions conference, we have a, a spiritual campaign where we meet every morning. And uh, we ask the kids to bring in their change for missionaries. And I'm telling you, there's something that just rips your heart out when you see a little kid bringing in their whole piggy bank. And they're like breaking it open in class and pouring it in the bag. And um, so this week, in four days, these kids decided to help. And they raised $1,058.75. 
four days. Simply amazing. So uh, just encourage you to help in any way you can. Be a blessing. Fill out those faith promise cards. Uh, uh, give to our church plan. Do these things. They're necessary. They're, they're essential for the word to go forth. And uh, we can be a part of our body, our work here. And go out and share the gospel on Thursday nights. And uh, Don't forget this Tuesday, ladies, we have fellowship. It's Mexican food. Uh, is there a salt and light breakfast tomorrow morning? Oh, next week? Okay. All right. Let's pray. And we'll be dismissed. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this night. Uh, thank you for the praise, Lord, of these little kids. Lord, again, it just melts my heart. To see him so excited about missions, to see him excited about giving to these missionaries, Lord. And uh, I wish we would sometimes have that excitement, like these little kids, Lord, uh, just running in with our money and bringing it into the to the storehouse, allowing it to be to be brought together and and just just giving it to him, just presenting it to him, Lord. It's it's so exciting. I pray that you would continue to. To, to work on the little kids' hearts, Lord, the big kids' hearts, all the kids' hearts here at, at uh, Trinity Baptist Temple Academy. Just bless that school, Lord, in a mighty way. Bless those students. I know there's some that, that still don't know you, Lord, as Lord and Savior, and I pray for them. Pray that you would work on their hearts. You know we've presented the gospel to them many times in the first couple of weeks, but allow us to remain faithful to that, Lord, and to, 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 to be sensitive to the Spirit in those situations. Well, bless now as we go our separate ways. Wash over us. Keep us safe. Bring us back here Wednesday night. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.